Welcome to the Symmetron webinar. Today's topic is ejection design. My name is Michael. I am in tech support at Symmetron. Unfortunately, I am unable to answer questions today. Please submit any questions to support through the Connect site or the Symmetron website, and I will get back to you. If you've attended one of the last two uh, webinars, this assembly will look familiar. Uh, we're continuing on with this design and adding ejection to this design. Looking at this part, you can see that there are features, uh, bosses, that require ejector sleeves and core pins. We'll get a quick measurement on sizing. So just over a quarter inch OD, one inch ID. Going to make the ejector system active and going to mold design, add ejector, collapse a couple of these. Going to select ejector sleeves. Uh, the B1 dimension in this case is the ID. You can see the length is grayed out. It's using uh, add rules to determine that. Um, the placing rules, it's going to automatically select the back of the retainer and the auto size will figure out a length from the back of the retainer to the part. One thing to be aware of, um, usually the first time you go in and add ejection, it's going to default to use diameter as pin size. And this is where the diameter is entered for that, if that's what you'd like to use. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind, if I had a half inch pin, but it was on a one eighth and using um, the diameter for part size, it would add a one eighth pin. So first thing I'll do is I'll turn that off because I selected the diameter I want to use. And I'm now going to use add geometry center. And we will select the center of the bosses. I know some people use add reference and do the same thing and then pick the points. Um, and preference on how you want to do it. Um, I'm just using add geometry to go right to what I want. <laughs> the Add rules for the length is uh, normally uh, very good, very accurate. Um, one thing in this case, this geometry, I've had around for 10 years using this part, so it's a little old in that. Um, I'm looking at these three pins here. They look to be a little long, and with ejector sleeves, you have to be uh, wary because there's only so much fit length or ream length at the top of them. Uh, I want to update these and see if I can go with a uh, shorter one in these three areas. I don't have to exit out. I can simply change to individual control, select that ejector, go to edit parameters, and I can see that that definitely will work. Go back to group, back to individual, Pick that one, same thing, go back to group, back to individual, and change that one. Change it back to group when I'm done. So all my pins are, are good. I'm going to say OK. Next step I'm going to do is uh, trim them. So I'm going to go ejector trim. I like to go to a view where I can turn things 
on and off so I can easily select uh, all these pins. First method I'm going to try is the movable side. I'm going to say OK and for whatever reason it's not using the movable side probably doesn't find active faces for whatever reason so uh, more than likely because i didn't do cut active directly to the block i did my cut active and my parting it didn't create any commands i'm free to go back to ejector trim select my pins again middle button. I'm going to tell it to do the work part. One other setting I want to do here is flat trim max. You can go min, mid, or max. Uh, for that, all my bosses are flat on the bottom. If we take a look, so you can see that they're all flat bottoms. So no real reason to put a shaped uh, trim on there. I'm going to say OK. It's saying nine ejectors were not trimmed. OK, so can't find the trimming faces. I've added nine sleeves, so all of them have not been trimmed. Uh, so it says use the option trim by pick say okay but the thing you got to be careful of is it created the command the command did not work so do not do another ejector trim on top of a command that failed let's clean that up uh, i'll delete this even if i were to do this and maybe only five out of nine were trimmed I wouldn't just move on to deal with the other four yet. I would actually edit that, unselect the ones that the trim did not work on, and then say OK, and then deal with those four, OK? So it's important not to build another command on a failed command, because it will cause issues later. So I'm going to delete this feature. I don't want it hanging around. It didn't do anything. And let's go back to the ejector trim. And I could easily box pick and get all this geometry, but I'm going to pick these faces individually, just minimize the data. more to go okay and I'll say okay. okay so we have those pins trimmed we're going to talk about different ways to mirror pins kind of cause an effect with it um, in this case right now I'm going to mirror these pins at this stage and pick the mirror plane. I'm mirroring uh, all the components. You can do symmetrical or that. The one thing you gotta be careful with is um, when I do the labeling that the mirrored pins, if they were symmetrical, would get the same, uh, same label as the mirrored pin, okay? I'm copy mirroring all of them. I'm disassociating, but like we'll see in a minute, disassociate doesn't mean they, they're not still related and uh, could cause you some issues later without cut. And I'll say, okay. okay. 
Okay, now we're ready to do ejector pocket. And I'm going to go to a, a view to make it easy to select them. And if I try to select all these pins to do the pocketing, you'll notice that it's going to limit our options in that I can't change what I want to do. The reason for that is the mirrored pins get the information from pocket from the original pins. And as soon as I select even one of the mirrored pins, it locks out the options. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to the first step. I'm going to unselect all the mirror pins, middle button. Now I have options. I'm going to go constant fit length. I'm going to set it to what I want. I'm going to make sure I set my Diameter clearance, again, this is added to the diameter. It's not per side. It's the actual diameter uh, increase for my clearance. There's always a picture under here that'll let you uh, see what the variables or what the terminology is. And I'm going to say now let's increase, look at this first. Everything looks good. We're going to say OK. And if we take a look here, we can do a quick measure. And we can see that the fit length or ream is one inch. Okay. Now, remember I told you that these pins are, are, re, are disassociated but still are re related. You can see that after I did the pocketing on the original pins, an exclamation mark appeared on all the other pins. Okay. And what that has to do with, if I activate one of these pins, and I go to show, you can see that each pin or sleeve has a line and a point. And using ejector trim gives some attributes that lets it know where the top of the pin now is. When I did the pocket, it used that knowledge and will adjust the cutting object to suit. So what I have to do now is activate this pin. Or not activate it. Let's, oh, sorry, we have it on show. <laughs> so I can right click on here and I can say update. And now if I show that, you can see that that line has moved down to the top of the pin, okay? So again, that's where I said they were related or disassociated, but they're still related. We're going to see another instance of that later. And we're going to change the order of when I mirror the core pins and show you how that might be a little bit better option, okay? Now they're all updated. Uh, I'm going to add a folder here just to clean this up. Ejector sleeves. And then I can pick these guys and drag them into there. Go back to ejector pocket. I am going to 
select the mirrored pens now. Again, no options because it's going to use the settings from the original ones and basically that's all what this is saying. And it's going to go through and now it's cut all the pins to the proper length. Okay. Next we're going to add uh, the core pins. I'll go to add from catalog and just a quick little um, background here standard core pins here um, you won't be able to use pot ejector pocket on them and the cut object on them is all net okay so what I did I'm I took an ejector pin catalog made sure and redid the part numbers to be proper for the the um, core pins but the cut object is like an ejector pin so it has some clearances in it if that's what you want uh, I wouldn't want a ream pin coming all the way from the back um, probably have some clearance and, and that's why I, I kind of made my own uh, catalog here for the uh, core pins. I'm going to select. This one doesn't use the placement rules so I'm going to pick the back of the back plate. Again make sure that's turned off and I'm going to use add geometry and go back and pick Uh, the bottom of the bosses here. And again, it's just a preference. I could have picked the the cuts for the uh, sleeves. Again, it depends how you want to build relations. Um, but I prefer Again, pick the part geometry, keep it relative to that. I'm going to move these up. As I'm going to add a backing plate later. And again, I want to keep it as different components. I want to keep it without cut. There's no geometry left in the core block. I'm going to turn that off for a minute. And we're going to go to ejector trim. Again, this function will give us a uh, attribute later for when we do the pocketing. I am going to select all the pins. And I'm going to go to my parting assembly and I have my core parting lines and I'm going to use the faces from this part to cut the core pins okay shape trim no offset I'm going to turn off that part I'm just going to pick the tops of these and give them my core part color. Uh, I'm not going to mirror them yet. I'm going to actually do my pocketing first and then mirror them after and kind of show you the difference of when you mirror these components. Um, what's a little bit easier might be a better workflow. Turn the core back, core block back on. I'm going to go to mold design, ejector lock. 
you can see it automatically picks up those pins. It would also automatically pick up core pins. You can set which lock you want by picking from there. Uh, symmetrical. We only use one style of lock, so I'll change that to that. You can um, change the angle of it if you want it 90 degrees to what it was um, or how it'll turn out. Or uh, Again, you have some control there. You can also have different spreadsheets for uh, different different locking styles. I'm going to say OK. Nothing happens, but it has added uh, the ejector lock attribute to those pins. And when I go to ejector pocket, it will remember that setting. Middle button. Again, I'm going to change it to constant fit length. And I'm going to change to active part because there's no geometry <laughs> uh, in the core block that the pin intersects with necessarily. I'm just going to change it to work part. And you can see that it is placed my clearance and that through. It's made the the locks for the pins. Okay. Now is the time I'm going to mirror these pins. So I am going to Assembly, assembly mirror. I'm going to select those pins. I'm going to pick the mirror plane. Disassociated, copy mirror all the components. And without cut. You can see now that there are no exclamation marks on those pins because I did the pocketing first, which adjusted that line we talked about, and then mirrored them. So there's no cause to update those, uh, those components. Again, I'm going to go to ejector pocket. I'm going to select the mirrored ones. Again, it's going to use the attributes that were set with the originals. And I can say OK. Again, that's all this note's essentially saying, or this warning. OK. Again, I'm going to make a folder. right there and I am going to add duplicate and I'm going to add a core pin plate assembly that I have pick the face so the back of that Again, we'll
Pass at all nine. Looks like it. So we'll add them to this side. And we'll just take a quick look at from the top. Looks good. There they are. And we'll go with cut. Yeah, we'll add another folder. <laughs> and so those are all set. Taking a look. Maybe I want them to go the other way. I can edit that. Go to here. See. There we go. So maybe that's a better a better fit there. Okay. Next we can. Go and add some ejector pins. I'm going to make a ejector pin um, assembly active. Uh, one thing you have to watch is in the edit rules. Um, if I look at ejector sleeves, there's an auto auto enable or activation sub assembly. A lot of times the Subassembly, it's one of the three ejector system fixed or movable. And with that tagged, it'll automatically put it under that subassembly. If I look at my ejector pins, I have untagged that. And that's why it'll allow me now to put the pins directly into a, a subassembly. So I'm going to go add ejector. Ejector pins. I'm going to pick the size I want. Half inch. Again, the auto size with the length will be uh, used. Don't use uh, diameter as set. And, you know, again, it's matter on how you want to add these. Um, I am going to add some reference here and try and keep them mostly in rows. So I'm just locking in a few reference points here that I can use as I place these guys in. Okay, so again, a third way to mirror components uh, when you're adding them. I'm going to add a line of symmetry. Whoops. Let's try that again. Line of symmetry with one axis. <laughs> and now I can Add some pins here. And 
and we'll put another one up here to balance. Okay. While I've been adding those pins on this side, they've automatically gone to this side. A couple things to be careful of. Um, if I'm referencing things like I have, don't use the snap on or off feature. I find that that can uh, give you some cyclic dependency later. Um, could give you, again, some, some problems down the road. So I, I really try to minimize the snap on, snap off feature here. I'm gonna give it some dimensions. So in this case, That's all that's needed there. Uh, that one's good. This one here. Need a dimension there. So they're all positive right now. And what else? Uh, Maybe I want this guy just a little further. There we go. Again, they're added as different without cut. I'm going to say OK. And you can see that it's calculated the lengths of the pins. Again, if I feel that, you know, maybe. This one's too long or too short. I could have, I could edit it in, in the ad again. But again, I believe it's pretty, pretty accurate. That's at the highest point here. So it probably is, if you look at it above uh, what the other pins are. Same as before, we're gonna go mold design. Uh, ejector trim. In this case now, because I added the pins mirrored inside of the ad, I can pick all these pins and it'll give me my options here. Or sorry, that's for pocket. <laughs> but the same thing would happen here with uh, trimming the tops of them if I added them as same or they were mirrored a different way. When I mirrored the original or trim the originals, the mirrors would trim. I'm gonna go by pick. I'm gonna pick that that color. Okay, I can now go ejector lock. Again, it knows which ones. Again, want the oval lock. And then I can go back to ejector pocket. Change that to constant, one inch. Okay, those are all done. Again, they're all in here. Again, I clean this up, I can go uh, add folder half inch vector pins and I can pick these again keeping them organized is always a good idea okay and there I'm gonna go 
add three pins for sucker pins and go with three eighths because that's the size of the runner and one thing here is uh, the auto length only works on like quick split or uh, part geometry it won't work on parting line or uh, runner geometry so I might as well take the auto size off pick the length I want top view I'll place one right there paste a couple here I could have used a line of symmetry there but it's only a couple pins Again, without cut, uh, 18s look a little long. Let's go to 14s. Yep, that'll work better. Say OK. Let's do uh, injector trim. Uh, actually, I'm going to do the one in the center first. I'll explain why in a second. Um, we're going to change this to pick. We're going to change this to flat and minimum. And we're going to pick I pick all the surfaces that that intersect that sucker pin if it was a bigger pin than the runner I would have picked the two parting faces here as well no offset but I do want to offset because I want it to be say three quarters of an inch below I'm gonna hit apply you can see that it's cut off flat below I can now pick those two guys those two and let's get that last one and those two guys we probably don't want as far down so I can say reduce those again flat and minimum those guys are above and when I go to do my ejector pocket now I'm going to do them separate okay um, let's do this let's say after you wanted to make this a Z pin I could add my ejector lock to it first and then I would do the pocketing okay I'll go right to the pocketing here I'm going to pick this one because of the heights different and again I want at least one inch of ream but I have to take into consideration how much below I cut that pin I can say apply and now I can pick these two guys uh, those two are a little shallower and again I can okay so there you go those are all cut in all the clearances again could make a folder and take these guys and drop them in okay I'm now at a point where I can
uh, label all these. Um, but the way I label things, I like to have control. In this case, I have my ejector pins. So I have them displayed. I will go to, and again, my ejector system is active. I'll go to table of ejectors. And for these pins, I'm gonna go don't create. I'm gonna go clear selection. And you'll see why in a second, why I, I go this route. <laughs> I pick my ejector pins and I can now give it a prefix for ejector pins. I can tell it to start at one, whatever font you like to use, the colors, so yellow's on the pins, uh, blue is on the uh, plates. You can select where you want them. So on the plate, what corner, what side, whether it's in the middle or on the edge. And I can say okay to that. And you can see that all the pins are, are labeled. I'm now gonna turn off the ejector pins I'm going to go with the ejector sleeves now. Same thing, table of ejectors. I am not creating the table. I don't need it yet. Not everything is labeled. I'm going to go to settings. We want that to be ES for ejector sleeves. I want it to start at one again. Maybe I want this not in the middle of the pin, maybe on a, you know, a side. And again, I'm going to clear selection just to make sure I'm only labeling what I want to label. And okay. And if we take a look now, you've got ES. ES, I could have changed the, the font size for the pin, but again, it's giving you the idea. I can now go core pins. Again, table of ejectors, just doing the Excel. And a clear selection. And go to settings. Now we want CP for core pin. Okay, so that's good. Um, maybe we'll go in the middle. Let's make that point one on the pin. Again, I'm going to go back to one. And you can see that the labeling will match your sleeves. They will receive the same number as what your sleeve was. Okay, the one thing we haven't looked at or talked about are my return pins. So a couple things here. Uh, I am going to change these. I'm going to upsize them. They were added as different, so that's why I'm having to update these individually. I don't like the location of them, so return pins, edit, my formula, let's change that to So 
that's all good. Okay, I'm going to use the injector trim. If these pins were in a clearance area, you need them to hit the cavity side. I'd go trim by pick. Um, in this case, it's, again, it's a flat. I'm going to go max. Uh, I don't think anyone ever wants a pin, return pin contoured. Uh, but again, if I had clearance, I'm in a seal off area, but if I had clearance, I would simply turn on the cavity block or my cavity skin and pick the faces that I need to trim those. In this case, I can, because it's a seal off area, I can pick the faces on the core here. Say OK. Um, need the ejector pocket. And in this case, um, I want them 5 thou over all the way through. So what I'm going to do is change my clearance here. I'm going to change my fit length to constant clearance length. And I'm going to kind of lie to it and give it the thickness of the original block. <laughs> or maybe even slightly bigger than the original block. It comes up with an error. It says I don't like what you're doing. But again, you can say, OK. <laughs> and if we take a look, you can see that I am 5 thou over all the way through. OK, so that's a way you can clear the pins all the way through. Use the constant clearance length. You go bigger than what your thickness is. It'll say I don't like it, but it will still do it. Um, couple things we've got to clean up before we do our Excel sheet. And I'm going to hold off to labeling these pins. If we start looking at these pins, hide other for a second. You can see we've labeled them. But remember I told you they're always related to the other pin. <laughs> if I, I, I can't ignore this update. So I have to update. <laughs> and now it comes up with another label here. And what I can do now is I can do a remove geometry. And I have to do that for each pin. Okay, I'm not going to go through each one, um, but just keep in mind removing this geometry from this pin. Does not affect the geometry on this on these pins. Okay, so again, I'm not going to go through them all. Um, what it is is you're importing at this stage, and then you added your note down here, and that's why it does, one doesn't affect the other. Okay, so now we can turn on uh, these guys. And the last thing I'm going to do again with the ejector system active is I'm going to table of ejectors. Again, it's a control thing. I like don't like surprises. Pick what I want. 
create table of all numbered. And I'll go back in the settings here and say RP, RP. Point two. Again, we're going to start at one. And say OK. Table ejectors. Yeah, overwrite the one I had. And you can see it goes through all the ones, all the twos. This is now a sheet like Excel where you can sort them if you wanted to. Gives you bomb numbers if you're using all parts. Uh, catalog name, um, part name, ejector pin diameter, uh, what the what the length is, what the spot length is, tells you where it's at if they're locked or not. A lot of information. The sheet it can be customized. Maybe down the road we'll do a a uh, webinar on on customizing some of the sheets inside of uh, Symmetron. Uh, that does it for this uh, webinar. Uh, you can visit our website at www.symmetron.com. Uh, if you're in North America, you can contact us at support-us at symmetron.com. And if you'd like to contact us by phone, you can reach us at 877 596 9700 extension 1